Hi, four wheel camper owners. In this video, we're gonna cover the standard lithium power system, which is found in campers built December of 2023 or newer. If you are curious to learn more about your power system, if you're troubleshooting an issue, this gives you the foundation to understand the components and some diagnostic tools that you have. All right, so let's start with a really high level overview. We have powered lithium batteries or a single battery, and that goes into a DC to DC equipped with a solar controller. So that's two methods of charging. That controls your truck charging, right? Your truck battery going into the camper battery, and that controls your solar charging, which is solar going into the battery. Then you have a parallel system, which is your converter. And the converter allows for shore power charging from a wall plug generator um, that goes into the converter and then to the battery. And then all of that is tied into a smart shunt and display that gives you all of the output readings of what's happening in the camper. Let's start with what you can see. This is the Victron smart display with a shunt. This is what's giving us information on the power system. There's a few key screens on here that, that tell you information about the system. The first screen here is going to be your battery voltage display. Back when we had the older AGM systems, the battery voltage was really important to understand the condition of the batteries. With the new modern lithium systems, that battery voltage is less important if you click on the down arrow, is gonna be your percentage of charge, right? If your battery is fully charged, it's gonna show 100%. If it's at 50%, that is half charged. This is the screen that really is the most important because it's telling you how much power you have in there. The next important screen is going to be one that shows your net amps or wattage. So if you see a positive number on this screen, it means that you're netting a charge. If you see a negative number on the screen, it means you're netting a discharge. So this camper, for example, we're in the showroom, we don't have any power input coming in, but we are using power. So if we added a charge to this, we're going to see that number increase. So it's going to be what we're using plus what's coming in. And so you should see that number increase. One last thing to note about this system is that the shunt is taking its best educated guess based on the information that it's getting from the different systems. So there is a little bit of a margin of error. If your camper is equipped with a Red Arc Manager system, so our advanced power system with the Red Vision, this information is gonna be a little bit different and we'll have a separate video that details that. But all of the battery information that we're gonna cover now is still relevant to you. Now let's talk about the battery portion of the power system. In our campers, we're currently using Xpion 360 lithium batteries. Most campers are equipped with 162 amp hour batteries. Select ones are equipped with 132 amp hour batteries. Those all have a 12 year warranty. Campers that were built prior to fall of 24 are gonna have a different battery brand, but they both have heated profiles. Each Xpion battery has its own battery management system or BMS, and that is linked to an app, which is called the Xpion Smart Talk, and that gives you information on each individual battery. Now let's talk a little bit about the DC to DC with solar controller. Its function is two things, it's truck charging and solar charging. For the truck charging, it allows the truck alternator to charge both the truck battery and the camper battery at different voltage rates. And then for the solar, of course, it's just allowing for that solar input. This is typically gonna be located in your battery compartment or in a close compartment. Uh, then on the unit itself, it has some different indicator lights. Under the profile, you're gonna see an H or an LI lit up, which means that is connected to the battery. Then under the status, you're gonna see the solar, which is the sun symbol, or the truck, which is the truck charging. Uh, and those are going to indicate when you have a charge coming in. The third light here is going to be the stage of charging that it's at. If you're not seeing any light for either the solar or the truck charging, it means that the system is not seeing a charge coming in through that channel. One thing to know is that even if the system is working properly, you might not see a charge coming in through the lights. And that's because when the, the battery is over 90%, it wants to protect the batteries from unnecessary wear and tear. Using the light indicators, there are other codes that the system can tell you, please refer to the owner's manual for more information on those codes. 
All right, so for the next phase of this video, we're gonna talk about some issues you might be having, how to troubleshoot them, and what to do to potentially try to fix them yourself. Let's get into a little bit of battery troubleshooting. So if the battery drops below a certain voltage, the BMS is going to shut off the battery. And when that happens, it means that the DC-DC is not seeing a battery load and that may not start the charging cycle. Uh, there is a way that you can wake up the battery and the important thing to know is that it has to be plugged into shore power. So a load from truck charging or solar charging isn't going to be enough to wake everything back up. So the steps to take are you're going to connect to shore power, you're going to navigate to the Victron Connect app, and you're going to search and pair and connect to the Victron Smart Charger, uh, which is a converter. You're going to put it into the normal recondition mode, and that's going to help wake the battery back up. Now, this might take a little bit of time depending on the load you have on the camper. So you want to turn as much as you can off in the camper so that it can bring that battery to life a little bit quicker. Uh, it can take anywhere between one hour to two hours or even longer if you have a lot of batteries or if you are running a load on the camper. Once the camper comes to life, you can disconnect the shore power, make sure everything's functioning with just your batteries, and then your solar charging should work and your truck charging should work and your batteries are functioning. One thing to note is that your display will not give an accurate reading until you reset the system by allowing the battery to fully recharge. Another common issue we hear about is somebody feels like their battery is dying prematurely. And most of the time it's due to having a load put on the battery terminal or the battery side of the shunt uh, instead of on the load side. So what'll happen is that you'll have a mismatched number where the shunt isn't reading accurately because it's pulling from the battery side of it. So if you've attached an inverter or a CPAP to the power system, just make sure that it's on the load side. So every ground wire to the load must be on the load ground side and not on the battery side. To reset this, if you've corrected it or if you are getting a strange reading, allow your camper to charge back up to 100% and that resets the calibration. Uh, one thing to know is that if you have done this, right, where you have wired it into the battery side, uh, the inaccurate readings are going to be magnified over time. And so you'll start seeing a larger disparity between the charge you think you have and the charge that's showing. To check if your shore power system is properly functioning, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna check that your main breaker and converter breakers are on. Uh, next, you're gonna plug into shore power. You're gonna make sure that 110 is flowing into the camper by pushing that kill switch in to shut off battery power. Then you're gonna to test to see if you're getting 110 power into the camper. An easy way to tell is on the 110 plug here, you're gonna see a green indicator light that shows that there is power coming to this plug, which is only the case if you're plugged into shore power or if you have an inverter, so make sure that inverter is off too. If you've confirmed that there is no power coming to the camper, the next thing you're gonna do is check that 110 connection. Make sure that it's actually on and there is power coming out of it. And then also check your, your extension cord. Make sure that it's plugged in properly, there's no breaks in it, everything is, is good and in working order. If you do have 110 power coming into the camper, these are the next things you're gonna to check to ensure that your shore power is working properly. You're going to pull out that kill switch into the out position, which means that the camper battery power is on. Uh, remember that the kill switch has to be in the out position in order for the batteries to charge. You're next going to grab your phone and pair it to the Victron Connect app, which is going to allow you to see how much power you have coming in through the converter into the camper. When it's in bulk phase, you're going to see about 30 amps, uh, but as the battery reaches full capacity, that charge is going to drop off. It's going to decrease, and then it's only going to charge to keep up with your draw demand. If your Victron app isn't showing a charge coming into the camper, then now is the time to contact your local dealer and work with them to troubleshoot what's going on. Next, let's talk about the truck charging. Remember that when your battery is 90, about 90% 90 charged or above, 
that the DC-DC may not try to charge the battery and that is to prevent unnecessary cycling to protect the battery. So if your batteries are below 90%, these are the steps we're going to take. You're going to turn on the truck. You're going to then come back into the camper and you're gonna check that the DC-DC truck charge input light is on. Uh, if this light isn't on, then you're gonna go back out, pop the hood, and you're going to use a multimeter to check the battery voltage. You're gonna note that reading. Then you're gonna check both sides of the 40 amp fuse that are coming from the battery. All of those readings should be similar. Uh, if they're not similar, then you're going to change the 40 amp MIDI fuse. If that still doesn't correct that reading, now it's time to contact your local dealer and see if you can troubleshoot with them. Uh, now, if this truck charge input light was on, the next thing you're gonna check is that stage LED light, right? This last light here. And if this stage LED light is not on and the batteries are below that around 90% state, uh, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to check the voltage on either side of the output fuse that's located near the DC-DC using a multimeter. So this is an example of that 40 amp MIDI fuse that you're gonna check. So you're going to read on either side of this using the multimeter. If the readings are mismatched, then you're gonna to wanna to change this 40 amp fuse. If you've checked all the readings, you've changed your fuses, and you still don't believe you're getting truck charging, now is the time to contact your local dealer and work on troubleshooting with them. The last power system check is going to be for your solar system. So again, remember that if your battery is around 90% or more full, the DC-DC might not try to add a charge to the system, and that is to prevent unnecessary cycling. So if your battery is around 90% or below, here are the steps to check your solar system. First, you're going to make sure that you're parked in full sun and your panel is getting maximum sun. Uh, then we're going to come back inside of the camper and we're gonna check this DC-DC. And we want to see that this solar input light, so this one with the sun, is on. Uh, if it's not on, then we're gonna take a voltmeter and we're gonna go outside and we're gonna probe that rear SAE plug, which is that accessory solar plug on the back of the camper. Uh, and at that point, you're gonna to want to see a reading about 18 volts or above. If you don't see that, contact your dealer and you can start working through the issue directly with them. Next, if you do see that solar light on, next you're gonna check that status light. If that status light is not on, uh, the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna come back to this 30 amp MIDI fuse, which is located near the DC-DC, and you're going to read with a multimeter either side of that fuse. You want the reading on either side to be similar. If it's not similar, that means you can go ahead and try to change this fuse, put that back in, and then you should see a similar reading. If you've checked all the readings, you've changed the fuses, and still don't believe that it's functioning, now is the time to contact your local dealer and work through the issue with them. That was a lot of information. We really hope that this gave you a good basic understanding of the camper's power system, how to read the information, where things are located, and how to troubleshoot it if you think that you're having issues. If there's any of this information that you didn't understand or you're not sure about, we're always happy to provide you support. Please contact our service department and we can answer any questions that you have. Uh, have fun out there, safe travels, and we'll see you down the trail.